Preston, William Lowe, and I have these roadmap discussions quite often. We're back again tonight to um, talk about some simple things that you can use in uh, recovery, in your recovery. Uh, we started talking about this, and I kind of didn't know where it would go as a topic, so I've got out like pretty much my entire toolkit here. I got a uh, whoops, wrong shoulder. I got a, a a walker that's got sandbags that I use for uh, parallel bars, a rollator behind it that I can put the sandbags on so, so you don't have to walk somebody with a gate belt. I got all kinds of stuff here. Uh, one day I thought that I was getting the vitamins out at night after I'd done the um, therapy cones in the daytime. And I thought, what's the difference between a vitamin jug and a therapy cone? Not much. And then I use them uh, to make um, obstacle courses. Anyway, I'm going to focus on, uh, there are a lot of things around the house that you can use. You know, I've got an oven mitt here, a hammer, a sponge, uh, a washcloth, a dish towel for wax on, wax off, uh, chip clips and clothes pins, bolts, putty, all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to concentrate on five things that I would spend a teeny bit of money on. All five of them add up to a whopping $50. And that's like some people pay a co that much of a copay to go to physical therapy. These things will all serve you well for a while. Um, when I was first recovering, I mostly walked. I did stand at the counter and grab the counter, but I, never, they, I don't know if they had these guys or not, but uh, one of the, the first thing that I, I recommend is uh, uh, there's a bigger one over my shoulder. I did this the wrong way before. There we go. I get all screwed up. That's a 16 inch one on, on my counter. And uh, I use that a lot uh, myself these days and with the people I work with locally. And they stick down pretty good i don't trust them in the shower actually this one is trustable in the shower but i can't find a brand name on it to get more of them somebody gave me one of them anyway um they're real handy i, I take them on the road for the shower but um i'm careful not to depend on them or pull on them what they are really handy for is um at the counter holding on at the counter um, when you're doing things like marching and squats and things. You have a much better grip when you put your hands around something round like this than you do just pinching the, the counter, which is all you can do, thumb up or thumb down. So um, that's my number. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to rate these. That's the first thing I'm going to talk about of the five things that I'd recommend. And I know, William, you've got a couple of things you want to show people too. So why don't you uh, take it away? Uh, yeah, sure thing. So I so, so, so I use a couple of things in my recovery. And I mean, I use a lot of things in my recovery, but today I thought I would just figure on the ones which really moved the needle in my recovery in terms of improvement. And the first one, I guess, which really helped me in my recovery significantly is probably... Is probably um is probably using a modified fork when it came to uh when it came to teaching my brain how to use both hands to eat again. So this is a fork which this is basically a fork which I designed um to help teach my brain how to connect the dots when it came to teaching itself how to how to eat eat with both hands again. And this is a normal fork that anyone can make themselves. You might notice that there's a little bit of plastic on the front. That's optional. Um, you don't have to have that, but basically what's what's here, the brown part, this is basically just a pencil grip wrapped around with some therapy band-aid. Therapy band-aid. And this is great because what this is going to do is it's going to going to teach your brain to 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 have a prompt to teach your brain how to keep the thumb straight when it comes to to gripping a fork. Because when it comes to uh using using silverware after your stroke. Especially when it comes to using it using cutlery, your index is going to do be doing a lot of the pushing down, whereas your thumb and also your other last three fingers they're going to be doing a lot of supporting. In other words, they're going to be supporting your index so that you can stabilize a piece of meat or something that you're cutting with your good with your non affected hand. So this is a fork which I used um, quite a lot, and it only took me 
it, it, it only took me about six, maybe three or four months of consistent practice with uh, therapy to uh, simulate food in order to get to a place where I could actually use both hands to eat, eat and cut up meat by myself. So this is one thing I highly recommend. It's super, super cheap. Um, you don't have to buy, you don't have to buy any ex expensive or fancy PVC pipe pipe forks that they sell for like $50, um, I believe. But this is just a normal fork that you can take and you just buy a pencil grip, you put it in the inside of the fork and then you wrap it around with some therapy band-aid. And once you've done that, then you essentially have something which you can practice with when you're eating real food or if you're not quite there yet, you can use this to practice with therapy and just cut up the therapy in, in a couple of pieces and just practice that way as well. So that's so that's the first thing which I would recommend that anyone that that anyone who's who's uh, serious about using both hands to eat after their stroke would start off with. If 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 this is too difficult for you, I would recommend that you go for for a normal fork, but instead of obviously the pencil grip. You would you would you would get some PVC um, tubing, and that's something you can buy at a hardware store. And then you would just insert that in the fork at the same time, so that you have a bigger grip to grip around with your fingers at the same time. This is just a really advanced version. Um, as as you can see, I'm just making the grip as thin as possible, just to minimize the amount of support that the brain needs to actually uh, eat, eat eat with both hands, and also allow that thumb to move in that full range when you're gripping down the fork at the same time. So that's so that's the first one which brought me a lot of results in my recovery after stroke, especially when it came to eating with both hands, which was one of the biggest goals for me uh, in my own recovery. Now the, the second thing, the second thing which I used in my recovery is this thing which I like to call a uh, a craft box which you can use to teach your brain how to pick up how to grip and relax, how to uh, grip grip and relax your fingers at the same time. And this is basically a, a, a simple craft lid you can pick up at any, any uh, craft store you want. But the modification with this is that I've added Velcro strips on the side. And the important thing about the Velcro strips is that the Velcro strips actually give your brain a sense of touch when you're picking up the lid. So usually if you just have a craft box with a lid on top, your brain doesn't have anything to latch on. I might just come up here so you, so you, so you, so you can see my face. So your brain doesn't have something to latch on if you just have a lid without the velcro. And so that doesn't really that doesn't really allow your brain to connect the dots and doesn't make for a very stimulating learning experience or memorable learning experience. So what I did was instead I had a normal craft craft box and instead of just using the lid itself as a exercise to just pick up the lid and drop it. I added the Velcro so that I could provide the brain with a little bit more, more, more sensation and more touch. I guess a sense of touch when it came to pick up the lid. And what this does is that actually uh, research shows that if you engage more parts of the brain, then you can actually allow your brain to recover a lot quicker. So if you're engaging both the part of the brain, which is responsible for, obviously using the muscles to pick up the lid and also you're engaging the part of the brain which is responsible for your sense of touch then that allows you to form that blueprint in your brain a lot better so this is this is another thing which i used in my recovery which i found was pretty handy um was uh pretty handy in i guess isolating the uh, finger muscles because obviously when you have a lid like this when it comes to picking it up you can't pick it up like that you have to pick it up very delicately and keep your fingers straight at the same time. And this is really good because it allows your brain to stop getting that situation, which I know a lot of strokes I was getting to where they have their fingers clenched in like that, but rather you're conditioning your brain to clench down like that. I mean, unless you're a fan of clenching like this for the rest of your life, it's, it's, it's a lot better to isolate and teach your brain that fine motor control rather than, rather than having a, uh, a more broad than brain approach where you're just gripping something really, really difficult like that, really, really hard, hard like that. So this is something, this is another thing I recommend. And as you can see, the reasoning is quite sound and it actually brought me quite a lot of benefits in, um, 
and allowed me to regain a sense of touch in my hand at the same time. So, so that's so that's the second thing I I used in my recovery. And earlier, Ralph, you and I we would we were talking about uh, different objects which which provided a sense of touch when it came to uh, when it came to recovering the use of your hand in in your recovery after stroke. And I know you and I know you had some things which you used which 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 had a rough surface which could allow your brain to get a sense of touch. Did you want to share some of those? right now um sure i guess uh, um well we talked about uh one of the things I've, i have in my toolkit here is the basic sponge it's got a scrubby side a green side that'll definitely give your hand a, a sensation of touch also, um, if you use a sponge to like uh, scrub down the counters with your affected hand and then take a kitchen towel and wax on, wax off with both the sponge when you clean it and the towel when you dry it, uh, that's some. Um, two things, you mentioned um, the therapy Band-Aid. I assume that's, is that the stretchy stuff that uh, you don't need tape with? where you just you can wrap it like when you get blood drawn they put a piece of cotton and wrap it around it and, and it just sticks is that what you're referring to as therapy band-aid uh yep i well well here in australia we we call it coban um yeah, so okay. it's basically a therapy band-aid which which sticks to itself after you wrap it around um, no, no, no. I was asking because here in the states we call it Coban, and nobody out there would would know what they're. And I just want to make sure what it is. So for the viewers out there, it's basically Coban. Uh, I've seen yeah, it come it. all different colors, but it started out in that kind of neutral brown color. You were mm -hmm. talking about you know being able to not grip like that for the rest of your life, but be able to extend your fingers. So one of the uh, this is kind of a two-parter from my second and third things. The second would be, I used uh, these basic post office rubber bands. Um, so there I'm doing all five fingers stretch. You can also set them up to where you do you like a thumb and a single finger, uh, switching fingers and doing all five fingers. Um, they don't put these around the mail anymore. Wow, broke anyway. Uh, it's an old one. They don't put them around the mail anymore. And these days, you can get something from uh, most any place, Amazon or whatever. They make these things that have four finger holes and a thumb hole, and they come in three different. Typically, they come in in different um, strengths, just like the therabands come in different colors. The different colors stand for the difficulties so you get a set of three of these guys and they don't slip they're wider they're about a half an inch wide so and they're like a kind of a silicone rubber and they work really well for extension because you want to work on opening that hand like we've talked about a number of times you know because it's hard to take that lid off if your hands uh balled up so uh that would be number to spend 15 bucks on a grab bar spend 10 bucks on a set of those um um ex extension bands and while you're ordering them i would highly recommend you order one of these let's see if you can see it see there's a big lump of um um nylon on the end that goes through a door it's wider than a door so no matter how thick the door is the lump goes on one side, comes out the door, and you've got a loop. I keep a, another working loop because sometimes I attach multiple things, so this makes it quicker. This one looks like it's about to break, too. Uh, so that would be, um, what would you do with that? You would use that with all kinds of different, either the TheraBands or the round rubber exercise bands. When you put it through the door, you've got like an anchor. You've got this loop. You can go down low and and uh, and uh, and then tie uh, a theraband around loop theraband around your ankle. And you pull back and forward, left and right, with your feet. You can uh, put it up higher overhead. You can put it up at shoulder height and 
start doing um, different kinds of pulls. Very useful for getting back the uh, arm and shoulder and, and working the um, legs uh, by using a door and an anchor point. When you go to the gym, they've got this little stainless steel thing with little things you hook in. Basically, they work a lot like this. You're just hooking something in and getting an anchor point so you can pull on it. This will let you use any door in your house. Um, I, I saw a 10 pack for $15 on Amazon yesterday. Of course, nobody needs 10. I was trying to figure out how I could give them away. Uh, great, great device. Uh, so I'm up to three. I know, William, you got um, some a couple more things. So why don't you show us another one? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So the second... So the second little tool which I used in my recovery, and I still use, and one I highly recommend to a lot of people, is 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 the good old yoga block. And the yoga block is great because, and we have it here. The yoga block is great is because when done right, you can actually isolate your shoulder, and you can actually force your brain to get back more strength in your wrist and also your fingers at the same time. So for example. One thing, one thing which you can do with the yoga block is you can position your affected arm over the yoga block. And in this position, what's so great about it, and I'll just move the camera back so you can see my face, is in this position, what's so good about this is you can see my shoulder actually can't move quite a lot. I'm at 90 degrees here. And here, if I'm trying to isolate my fingers on my wrist, I can't turn on my shoulder too much. So this is fantastic. This is fantastic because it allows your brain it allows you to teach your brain how to switch off upstairs in order to get downstairs going a lot better. Um, and not only that, you can also use the yoga block to obviously stretch a calf. You can use the yoga block for electrical stimulation to do the same thing. Let's say if you can't extend your wrist quite yet, you can use electrical stimulation. You can hook yourself up. You can pull your arm on the yoga block at the same time. And you can have the electrical stimulation machine going on while you try to perform some exercises there. So overall, I think the yoga block is fantastic. It's done a lot for my recovery, not just in, not just with the shoulder and hand, but also, but also as a, um, as a tool I can use to stretch out my calf and help me walk a lot better as well. Um, and also, Ralph, earlier we were talking about the yoga block and different variations that we both used in our recovery. Um, you were talking about a more economical approach. Um, <laughs> Which, well, is, which is very similar to the yoga block, which I know a lot of folks could also implement and apply in their recovery. Do you want to share that as well? Sure. Um, I wish I'd known about the yoga block. I, I didn't really even know about them 15 years ago. I actually ordered one today for yoga class. I do adaptive yoga and we keep using them and I keep dropping out of the last 10 minutes because I don't have one. So I ordered one today. They're pretty reasonable, so my solution doesn't save that much money. I think uh, you can order a, two yoga blocks for ten dollars, six or seven for one. But what I did was, I didn't realize I needed to isolate all the way up to my shoulder when I was doing wrist stuff. I just said, "Okay, well, I'm holding it. What should do it with my affected hand? Uh, okay, you know, I can hold it like this, and now it's isolated. How can I, you know?" How can I um, block my arm so that I can hang the wrists over? And um, I've got a, like a 60 or 70 year old dictionary that's about eight, eight inches thick. And when I need, uh, so I use that. And when I, if that was too high for what I was doing, I would stack up a couple of other hardback books. Um, Work pretty good. It's like, you know, using soup cans for to make obstacle courses. You know, we've got these things around. Um, it wasn't that I was opposed to, um, and think about a yoga block. It wasn't that I was opposed to spending a couple of dollars. It had more to do with, oh, I've got books here. I can hang my hand over some books and do therapy like now. Uh, so that was my experience with, uh, with that. I'll, I'll probably now that I have a yoga block, I actually never edited. We shot the videos of uh, with books in the dictionary. Maybe I'll go back and reshoot them with the yoga block or suggest the yoga block to a pickup and put it at the end. One of the other things, uh, my fourth thing would be um, to get a dowel. 
or some kind of rod of, of some kind. A friend of mine bought me this dowel. At the time, they were less than $5. If you get an inch and a half maple dowel like this now, it's going to cost you about $10. You can buy a section of inch and a half PVC pipe for, for uh, I think, 10-foot sections, um, like five bucks. They'll cut off. Most uh, big box stores have uh, cut down sections. You get a three foot section of PVC. Uh, these are real handy for a lot of things. Um, uh, doing shoulder exercises. Uh, one of the things I, I have a video on this. One of the things this is my affected hand. See, when I've got this in my unaffected hand, I can push out with it. So if I'm trying to like push out like that, I can actually push out with this if that you know to have some weakness here so i can get the range of motion by helping it with this hand and think about pushing pushing but doing some of the work over over here i also use this to push my shoulder up you gotta be real careful doing this because when you get whenever most people um when they get their arm to about here they have trouble getting it above above their shoulder and that's because a whole other set of muscles kicks in when you move your hand above your shoulder, that's when your scapula starts rotating. Up to here, it doesn't rotate very much. So you've got the shoulder that didn't work for six months, or in my case, a year. And now you want to ask a different set of muscles that you haven't used at all to rotate that scapula and get your hand all the way up. It's tough. My hand came back in three months. It took me a year to get my shoulder back. Anyway, one thing you do is just keep pushing up and but you don't want to push in any, any kind of pain zone so uh let's see i always uh i did a video on this and i always say is something you can have around your house like that's a piece of wood i cut above my refrigerator that's an old axe handle this is a piece of one by two from the hardware store or from the big box store it cost you a couple bucks only not as nice as a nice round dowel but there's a lot of things you can do with a dowel, and you ought to be able to get one for about five dollars. So we're up to a whopping thirty-five dollars with the, the four things I'm thinking about. So William, I know you got one more, and then I'll um, talk about my last one and uh, see where we go from there. So why don't you talk about your next one? Uh, yeah, sure. So the next, so the next one which I used on my recovery, and one which I highly recommend to a lot of my pain clients, and one which they found positive results with. And I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who's come up with this, um, at least at least in the internet, is the is is using the three hole punch as a tool in your recovery to teach your brain how to how to strengthen up a grip and also learn how to relax a grip. And I found this is really handy because when I'm gripping this, you can see I'm forced to grip the grip like this keeping my fingers straight and the, the uh, spring system on your three hole punch, it also works such that it also allows your fingers to spring back open when you're, when you're finished gripping. And I find this is a really good, this is a really good variation from your standard grippers where, where a lot of strokes survivors are encouraged to sort of have a power grip where they use too much effort to grip, grip, grip the grip and flex the fingers together. That, a couple of months later, they end up with their fingers sort of clenched up and brought up in a fist like this. The good thing about the three-hole punch is that, as you can see here, it stops you from getting into that situation where your fingers buckle, but rather it teaches your brain how to have that fine control to regulate the muscles so that you can't do that, but rather you're having a controlled grip and you're also having a controlled relaxation so that your fingers don't so that, so that your fingers aren't conditioned to, to be forced into a situation like you're constantly like this. Likewise, with a three-hole punch, if you look at it from the other side, you can also vary it by switching your hand so that your thumb is actually on top and then your fingers go on the other side and the same thing occurs. And obviously, you're keeping your thumb straight when you're clenching down rather than that, allowing your thumb to buckle in like that. So this is, this is, this is one of my greatest inventions. Um, and greatest discoveries in my stroke recovery. And I think that it's it's something I highly recommend to everyone who who wants to teach their brain another perspective of how to uh, grip rather than 
rather than using a um, strong, strong, uncontrolled power grip, where where your brain doesn't know how to diff, where your brain doesn't know how to differentiate how much power it needs to to grip, so that it can relax after it's uh, flexed its fingers. So that's so that's an another thing I used in my recovery. And my final and my final thing that I also used in my recovery are these are these splints, are these finger splints which can actually go on your fingers, which actually stop your fingers from bending. So for example, um, so for example, I would I would put these on my fingers and I'll just put this one on my on my middle finger. And what that would do is that would stop my middle finger from bending at all. And these are really handy. These are really handy for a lot of stroke survivors because a lot of stroke survivors find themselves in situations where their fingers are clawed in like that and they can't grip at all. So these these splints, and these are called oval eight splints, by the way, um, and I have the packaging here. These splints actually stop your fingers from being clawed in like that so that you can do things like the three-hole punch, like the three-hole punch without your fingers coming in like that. So these these this is another tool which I would recommend to anyone who wants to get back more use of their hand. It's one I recommend for my paying clients, um, which also gets quite a lot of benefit for them as well. Um, and I think that, like I said, if you're a fan of not having your fingers bought up in the fist for the rest of your life and you want to rectify that and correct that, correct that habit, then you could give these overweight splints a try. I think they're about, I think they're about, um, it can't be more than sixty dollars or eighty dollars um, US US on Amazon to get them, um, but they're in high demand. Um, I think they sell out quite quite quickly. But once you do get them, um, this is an investment for the rest of your life or until you can actually get your fingers going again. Um, they are the uh, benefit is worth a lot more than what they actually cost. Um, so I think this is one I would highly recommend. Um, just just because it's so versatile and you can not only wear them when you're doing exercises, you can also wear them when you're going outside and maybe you want to have some real life practice where you're maybe using your fingers to um, do some tasks which which require your fingers not to be bored in, bored in a fist all the time, but rather forcing your fingers open so that you can actually do things. Um, yeah, so that's, so that's, that's, that's a final one which I used in my recovery, which has a lot of benefit, not just for myself, but strike survivors I've coached. Um, Ralph, I know earlier you mentioned you had some things that you did to, uh, I know you, you, you want to go for your last one as well. Um, those are pretty much all of the ones which, which have created the most benefit for myself and my recovery. Um, do you want to share your final one now? Sure. Um, I got two quick things to say about um, the, um, the well, like for the three hole punch, I found I, I was warned about putty and not to do too much gripping. I, I noticed uh, like, like when I couldn't open my hand very well, I'd, I'd grip and I'd bury my fingers in the putty. And like one time my fingers got stuck in the putty, I had to pry them open. Oh, this isn't good if you're supposed to be working on extension. So I, I didn't know what the solution was until about six or seven years ago. I was over at one of the local stroke survivors' houses that I work with, and they had a gripper, a you know, eight dollar gripper, and it had a set of springs. And uh, I took a picture of it and looked it up. And they actually come with multiple sets of springs. You can spend as much as twenty dollars on them. Uh, if you feel better about having an official gripper and you don't have a three hole punch and you want to spend a few bucks. Uh, I don't know what a three-hole punch costs anymore, but you can also get gripper with springs. The point of the three-hole punch, well, there's two points. William said another one about the way you're uh, gripping and holding your fingers, but the point is that they end up both a three-hole punch and a gripper with uh, springs open your hand back up, and I, I think that's important. William's the occupational therapist, not me, but uh, I like something that open them. Um, back up and as far as his fingers finger splints finger splints go i know a lot sometimes stroke survivors end up like with one knuckle that won't go and then another one's like hyper extended the other way and uh i, I have a friend stroke buddy who um 
use those little finger splints to um, get his fingers to be uh, straighter and, you know, in a, uh, just in a more natural, not, not doing anything. You know, when you're, uh, when your hand's in a natural position, it's a slight C like that. Some people say that one of the things you can do is, well, you can wad up a towel like that, that size. Well, some people also say get a, a ball, like a soccer ball or a seven or eight inch ball. I think this is a 10 inch ball. This is my number five. It's, this is a official kickball. Uh, we all probably played with these on the playground in elementary school. You play dodgeball, you play kickball. Um, <clears throat> And the tie in there was that, let me use my affected hand. One of the things that you can do is it's kind of like a resting splint. If you sit a, around with a, a ball in your lap and keep your hand, if it's wanting to clinch, this is keeping it in a slightly open position like a, a simple splint does. And this is the natural curve. Like if you put your, if you put your, this is my unaffected hand, but just put it out. It's got a slight curve to it. You don't put your hands out like that. You know, there's slight, they're relaxed. So, um, so this works for that. Uh, if you wanted to do a lot of that with your hand, yeah, I might recommend getting a just slightly smaller ball than this one. This is like a bigger official one. It was $14. They also had a smaller and cheaper looking one for six or eight dollars. So you might get something a little smaller. I had soccer balls in all sizes, I guess, for different size kids. Um, so you could pick one that worked well for your size of hand. Uh, but back to the kickball. Kickball, you can do a lot of things with. Um, first of all, you can dribble it like a basketball. It uh, It's not as hard as a basketball. It's To me, it's easier to dribble. You can also toss it up in the air and try and catch it back. Oh, not so good with my affected hand doing that. Um, you can also use it to do things bilaterally, like try and shoot baskets or just throw it against the wall. You know, in therapy, they toss a, like a beach ball thing at you or one of those big uh, balls you, you sit on, lightweight ball, and it's to get you to react. It does a lot of um, core and trunk strength work to, you know, because you have to move over here and grab it at the right time. Then they throw it this way. They throw it high, low, left, right, just to get you moving in different directions. Well, you can do that up against the wall. Um, uh, you could probably even do it one-handed. That balance is going to become an issue. If you're not walking, you're probably not going to be bouncing things against the wall, or you could also you can kick the ball against the wall and then kick it with one foot, kick it with the other. Try, you know, because when you kick it with your unaffected foot, you're having to stand on your affected foot. When you kick it with your affected foot, that's a whole nother challenge because you got the whole speed, timing, and coordination issues. So I had a guest, Robin Oxford Davis, on my Tuesday show, and she had a bunch of videos she'd made with the kickball, and she called it the single most important therapy tool in in her toolkit she spent a lot of time kicking it and throwing it against the wall and catching it or kicking it again so so that's uh you could probably get one for eight dollars i put down fifteen dollars that's a total of fifty dollars for all the things i'm talking about william stuff didn't add up to all that much either the finger splints were Maybe the most important thing, I guess the part of the point of this would be that there's lots of things you can use to get better if you're willing to think about them and adapt. That's all, uh, you know, William and I um, did in our, our recoveries. And the more you're willing to adapt and, and try things and not be defeated by them, uh, uh, all that's going to serve you well in, in your recovery. So... Um, do you have anything else, William? Uh, well, I mean, I guess the final thing I want to add is uh, don't think that you have to break the bank when it comes to your recovery. Um, you might notice that some people are advocating a big robotic arm is, is, is going to be the thing which is going to get you to the promised land. But more often than not, um, if you just get back to basics, some of the things 
that you find around your house, like some of the things that Ralph and I shared in this roadmap, they can also help you see improvements in your recovery without having to spend a lot of money at the same time. It just means that when you do do these things, which we've shown you, um, if you're attentive with the way that you're obviously performing your movements and you're making sure that you're focusing on quality, not quantity, then you can get the same amount of benefit from simple things you would find around the house. Um, then like, 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 like you would, if you were to spend a lot of money on a, um, little gadget or gizmo, which is, which is a lot of money. So I think, I think going back to basics, it, it is a, it is a principle, which every stroke survivor should really, um, take heart of because, because when it, when you're able to do exercises in a basic way and you're able to, to simplify you do it the way that you do it and really isolate those movements, then it can be really beneficial for your recovery. Um, that's that's really the only thing I want to add. Um, and I think that's, that's the thing which is most important uh, in this roadmap, which we've shared today, Ralph. Right. I, I would agree. Also, I would say um, get moving. A lot of people seem to, you know, th uh, wait for something to take them to the promised land, as you called it. And it doesn't it's not a, a guarantee. You know, sometimes insurance doesn't pay for those uh, fancy devices and things. So, you know, it's OK to, you know, to pursue them. But I try and recommend to people that they while they're pursuing them, that they, you know, uh, jump on their own recovery with things that are, um, you know, don't add up to either in the house already, uh, like the hammer and wash rags and things that I held up, uh, or things that you can buy like the kickball or the dowel or the door anchor, the extension thing, the grab bar, total of $50. They'll serve you well in your recovery. That's the copay for some people at a physical therapy thing. So physical therapy appointment. So, uh, you know, if you want to look for devices, great. But uh, I say jump on your recovery now in the meantime, because if it doesn't work out, then you're not like uh, behind the eight ball. Um, if you've had a program that you're doing at home all along and your insurance says, no, you're not going to get that thing, then at least you've been working towards getting better. So. Unless you have anything else, William, I'll uh, thank you for your time and and tell everybody out there that we'll see him next time on Roadmap. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Ralph. Much appreciated. Thank you.